Do you dream of making money while you sleep? That's the magic of passive income. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how real estate can make that dream a reality. If you've ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, then you understand that investing in assets and building passive income streams are essential for becoming financially free. Real estate investing is the most tried and true way to build consistent cash flow, and there are a variety of different ways to achieve this outcome. The first one is rental properties. So now there's a variety of different opportunities in real estate with rental properties. Some are truly a bit more passive than others. So you've got single family homes, you've got uh, duplex or triplex units, and then you've got larger scale multifamily. So let's talk a moment for the single family homes. Now single family home, you've got a single tenant, typical family living in that home. Even if you're working together with a property management company, there's a little bit more active involvement there because of the accountability reporting. You own the property directly. You know, there's issues that come up, whether it's uh, AC goes out, have some plumbing problems, these things the property management company is typically contacting you on. Duplex, triplex, maybe it's a little better in that you've got two or three people in there renting. So if one moves out, you still have actual income because it's a single family home, the person moves out, you're gonna have some downtime getting the property ready for the next tenant and getting them moved in. And then multifamily units is typically 75 units to 500 units, large scale apartment complex. This really becomes a much more passive investment because you're investing into a syndication uh, with a company like ours and then you're participating in the ownership the income stream, the tax benefits, but the on-site team, meaning the property manager, the regional manager, our asset management team, are handling the day-to-day -day affairs of dealing with tenants, toilets, and potential headaches. The next one is real estate investment trust. Now, there's benefits in investing in REITs for passive incomes, oftentimes a public REIT. It's available uh, on the stock exchange through a stock brokerage company or brokerage firm. It has a pre-established dividend that it's paying off based on the per share price. It is also investing in a diversified approach. Oftentimes you have different categories, whether it's a REIT investing in office or mixed use property or apartment uh, investing as well. And now there are those positives to it, but let me just say this, there's a bit of a negative to it as well that you have to understand is that you're dealing with an institutional uh, manager. So it's kind of a, you know, you don't know really the management, you're not involved or understanding the direct purchase of the assets, meaning they're just doing it on their own. Um, and then, you know, lastly, that you also have volatility because it is a publicly traded REIT. It is based on a share price and it's based on the market's perception. So even as we've seen some of the interest rate headwinds that we've gone through, some of the inflation periods that we've just gone through recently, that's affected negatively some of the REITs because then the market in general is saying that it's worth a little less based on those factors and that's brought the share price down. So, the, But it is true that with them, you can actually invest, put your $100,000 in there, and then get that dividend that's coming in through the investment. The next one is crowdfunding platforms. Crowdfunding platforms really have come into play over the last five to 10 years, more specifically, more mainstream in the last few years. And what they do is they provide a platform or opportunity for people to invest, and they bring together investors and deals that are coming onto the market. Now, with that, it does give you oftentimes a lower dollar amount. There's some available that you can invest for as little as a few thousand dollars. Now, the downside of that is you have a much broader anonymity, meaning you're not really engaged with vetting who the sponsor is of the deal. You don't have as much maybe interaction and information about the track record other than what's just provided by the platform. Again, also a bit less in the say of what is really comprising of the different investments. Now, clearly you can choose the investments, but again, it's something uh, that you have less participation in, and then you're trusting more in the outcome based on the validity of what has been purported on the platform. If you're enjoying this video, make sure give it a like and subscribe to my channel. The next category that we have is real estate syndication. So a real estate syndication is truly you participating in a larger overall real estate investment. An example of that would be just for simplicity, we'll use round numbers. There's a $10 million building that's being bought. 
Typically, the bank uh, portion of that is between six to seven million, around 70%. And then the additional three million is equity. So a company like ours will reach out to our investors as well as our firm and invest that $3 million. So you can invest $100,000, $250,000 in that. Participate in the income gains of the property as well as the tax benefits because you are a real uh, owner of the property and you get the real tax benefits as well, which can help offset your actual income on the project. Now, so this is truly a great potential way for passive investment because again, a company like ours is doing the sourcing, the acquisition, the operations, the maintenance of it, and then ultimately the disposition or sale of it. And you're able to sit back and collect that income in a truly passive way. The last thing that we want to talk about is how to also maximize cash flow. So what we want to look at doing and what we do all the time on our properties is how can you increase the rental income? How can you focus on reducing expenses to maximize the overall net income of the property? And then further from that, that's able to generate and distribute uh, excess returns and increase that passive income. So increasing rental income, when we're buying a community and looking at it, we look at, you know, what is the condition of the units itself? Uh, I just came from earlier today, a property that we own here locally. And you can look at the units were built in the 80s and now we're able to go in, uh, make them newer, nicer as a unit, and then bring the market rent to a more comparable rent in the competing submarket. So that is a tremendous way if you're able to bring rents up from you know, 850 to 1,000, or in this case it was 1250 over a year's period of time, it has a dramatic impact on what that does to the overall net income and the passive income that we receive and you receive from that project. The other thing is you look at how can you increase uh, other income. So again, now these are a lot of benefits that come from the multifamily portion of investing. So because in communities, we're able to provide uh, preferred parking at a cost, right? So somebody gets to park right in front of their spot and it becomes a designated spot for them right in front of their apartment. They pay a small fee for that, whether it's 10 or 15 or $20 a month. And you say, well, I don't know what people want that. There's plenty of people do because again, it's an option. They can choose it. There's uh, also where we implement a rental strategy where we provide through a national company contract that we have the leasing of washer and dryer. So they have the flexibility and convenience of washing and cleaning their clothes inside their own apartment. And then we're able to get a portion of that rental income from the washer dryer. Another way that we do it is by coming in and providing a bulk Wi-Fi or cable program so that we're able to actually decrease cost to the uh, tenant where they're getting a lower cost provision for their Wi-Fi. And then we're actually getting a portion or percentage of that income as well. The other thing that you can look at is other ancillary value add services, maybe value uh, valet trash, for example. That's where they can put the trash right outside of their door in a receptacle that's picked up by our team or by a valet trash company. And again, that's a smaller nominal fee per month. And again, the thing that you look at is all these fees uh, and all these ancillary services add up when you look at your bottom line. The other thing that you can do is, and we do this a lot, is reduce expenses by aggregating our insurance costs because we own so many communities. You can get better pricing uh, through the insurance company. We're able to better uh, work with our management team because they don't manage one complex, but multiple complexes. So we're able to get a lower cost of services from them. We're also able to consistently focus on you know, optimizing the uh, use of services, whether it's on-site staff team or shared expense between sharing uh, team members as well. So a lot of great ways and all of these things add up. You know, every dollar counts, every dime counts when maximizing cash flow. That's all I have for today. But before you go, I have a free gift for you in the description of this video. I'm here to keep you informed so that you can make the best decisions when it comes to investing your hard earned money. I'm giving you my free guide to investing in multifamily real estate, which gives you all the insights I've gathered over the past 20 years of investing. Click the link in the description and download it. And I'll see you in the next video.